What I'd like to talk about now is the idea of stress transformations. And the, the, the concept of stress transformations comes up in a number of different contexts. One really simple context is something is shown here. Suppose I have a round bar and I've applied some kind of axial forces to it, but I'm also applying torsional loads to it. And we have systems for calculating what the stresses are under both types of loads separately. So for instance, uh, the axial forces we would probably set up with some kind of XYZ coordinate frame and we calculate the stresses in that coordinate frame. And then for the torsional loads we would probably use a different type of coordinate system where, where we have the Z axis going along the length of the bar and then we use some kind of polar frame in the orthogonal direction, so some an angle and some radial uh, orientation. And then we would have the stresses both in this sort of Cartesian XYZ frame, but we'd also have this, the stresses from the torsional loads coming to us in the polar frame. And if we want to combine them together to determine the total state of stress, we're going to have to transform the stresses from one coordinate frame to another to be able to get a, a sensible result out of this. Um, the other case where uh, the concept of stress transformations comes up sometimes is suppose I have a plate and it has maybe a welded joint at some angle going through it and I've somehow measured the stresses in the XY coordinate frame so I know the normal stresses in both the X and the Y directions and the shear stresses in the XY plane but I'm really interested in the performance of the weld. Well the questions that would probably be asked are what are the shear stresses in the weld so the stresses that are parallel to the joint or what are the normal stresses towards the, acting on the joint. And one way of thinking about this is, well, there's another coordinate system that's aligned with the weld. And so we'd be thinking about, well, the question of normal stresses to the joint would be figuring out what sigma x prime x prime is, or sigma, if we want to know the shear stress, what sigma x prime y prime is. So this is another case where we'd like to transform the stresses that we know in one coordinate frame and determine them in another coordinate frame. So here we're not adding two different analyses together like we were with the round bar up here, but it's a, another example of where stress transformations are an important concept. So to begin, let's start with the case of vectors and talk about what it means to represent a vector in one coordinate frame versus another. So here I have vector f and I have a coordinate frame x, y. And in the xy frame, I can represent f in terms of its components in the x and the y directions. So I have the unit vectors ex and ey in the two coordinate directions. And then I have the components of f with respect to those axes. So those are just the orthogonal projections of f onto the x-axis and the orthogonal projection of f onto the y-axis. And that gives me fx and fy. So those are the components of the vector f in the xy coordinate frame. Now, let me introduce the second coordinate frame, x prime, y prime. And x prime, y prime is going to be oriented with respect to the x, y axes through some angle, which I've labeled here as theta. Now, in the second coordinate frame, I could also think about expressing the components of f. So I could take the orthogonal projections of my vector f onto the x prime axis or onto the y prime axis, and I would have this second representation here of the exact same vector. And I have fx prime, ex prime, which is the unit vector in the x prime direction, and fy prime times ey prime, which is the unit vector in the y direction. So this is a completely uh, legitimate representation of the vector f. And so I have two representations. I have one in the xy frame, and I have a second one in the x prime, y prime frame. And the question of transformations would be, say, suppose I know fx and fy, what are fx prime and fy prime, or vice versa? So how do I transform the components of the vector from one coordinate frame to the other? And we're going to treat this case first before treating the more complicated case of how do you transform the stresses from one coordinate frame into another one. So let me go ahead and start. If I want to know what the x prime coordinate or what fx prime is, well, one way of doing that is I can take the dot product of f with respect to ex prime. And so 
That's what I've written here. And let me go ahead and expand out f, but I'm going to expand it out in this fashion here. So, and notice that if uh, I observe that the dot product of ex prime with ex prime is equal to one, and the dot product of ex prime with respect to ey prime is zero, then I exactly have the situation where the first product here is going to give me fx prime and the second product here will give me zero. So I'll get exactly what I want. So this is one way of writing the component of a vector with respect to a basis. I just simply take the dot product of the vector with respect to the, the unit vector in one of the coordinate directions and that will give me the component in that direction. Now what I'm really interested in here is how do I represent fx prime in terms of x, fx and fy. Well, one way I can get to a relationship of that form is instead of writing f in terms of its x prime, y prime components, I can go ahead and write f in terms of the x and the y components here. Okay, So now I have a relationship that's connecting fx prime with fx and fy. And all I have to do is take the dot product here to come to a final relationship. So I can go ahead and take the dot product and all I'll have is fx multiplied by the dot product of ex and ex prime and fy multiplied by the dot product between ey and ex prime. And those dot products are things that I know just from the geometry of the figure that I have up above. And so I have fx prime is equal to cosine theta fx plus sine theta fy where theta is the angle between the x and the x prime axis. And I also then can perform the same operation as I did before. I can say fy prime is equal to ey prime dotted with f. And then for the expression for f, I would go ahead and use the expression that I have in terms of fx and fy. And if I do that dot product there, I'll arrive at a second relationship here that tells me fy prime is equal to minus sine theta fx plus cosine theta fy. So here I have my transformation rule for how I transform the components of a vector in terms of one coordinate frame, so the x, y coordinate frame, and come up with expressions for the components of the vector in the x prime and in the y prime coordinate frame. So this is an example of a transformation law. If we want, we can also write this transformation law in a matrix vector form. So I can put the components of f in the x prime y prime coordinate frame into a column vector and the same thing for the components of f in the x y coordinate frame and then I have those vectors multiplied by this matrix here of cosines and sines will transform the vector from one coordinate frame to the other. Uh, this matrix itself is a rotation matrix it has the, the peculiar property that if I multiply it by its transpose I get the identity so that also means that the inverse of R is simply its transpose. And that's a convenient uh, observation to make so that you can kind of reverse this law if you want. It's easy to write down what fx, fy is in terms of the, the components in the x prime, y prime frame because it's easy to write down the transpose. It's just going to be cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta cosine theta. So I just take the transpose of the matrix and that gives me the inverse of the transformation rule. So that's a convenient thing to note. Uh, there's two important remarks here also uh, when you write it in this matrix vector form is that you get the exact same structure in 3D. So if I have the components in the prime coordinate system, they're related to through a rotation matrix times the components in the unprimed coordinate system. So And the rotation matrix here in 3D is simply the same thing as I had in 2T, 2D. It's just simply a matrix of the direction cosines uh, between the different coordinate directions. And by direction cosine, I mean the dot product between the, the unit basis vectors between the unprimed coordinate frame, let's say EI, and the primed coordinate frame, let's say EJ prime. So I takes on values X, Y, and Z, and J is going to go through X prime, Y prime, Z prime. And the direction cosines are nothing but these dot products. And they're called direction cosines because those dot products are the cosine of the angle between the two axes. So EI dot EJ prime is the cosine of the angle between the I axis and the J prime axis.
So it's easy to read off from the geometry of the, of the figure representing or defining the two coordinate frames what the direction cosines actually are. Okay, so this is how we transform components of vectors. We multiply the components in one frame by a rotation matrix and that gives us the components in the second frame. And we'd like to now kind of extend this to the concept of stresses.